We may already be experiencing an Antarctic ice melting tipping point caused by man made global warming. Here's what you need to know. The acceleration of Antarctic ice loss in recent decades may already mark the beginning of a self sustaining and irreversible period of ice sheet retreat, according to a study measuring historical ice sheet debris, which has identified patterns behind eight episodes of ice sheet destabilization across recent millennia that could also apply now. The Nature Communications Journal study found that in the eight previous episodes, mass Antarctic ice sheet destabilization switched on within only a decade or two, with bursts of iceberg calving causing the sheet itself to destabilize within only a few years each time, before continuing for many centuries, according to a press release published on Eureka Alert. The study also found that sea levels responded to these tipping points accordingly, also rising for several centuries and up to a millennium in some cases. One study co author, Zoe Thomas, summarized why we should worry. If it just takes one decade to tip a system like this, that's actually quite scary. Because if the Antarctic ice sheet behaves in the future like it did in the past, we must be experiencing the tipping right now. The Antarctic ice shelf is vulnerable to a chain reaction collapse. Here's what you need to know. As melting ice in Antarctica exposes land beneath it, the chain of processes set off may be capable of causing the sheet to collapse. According to a study in Nature Geoscience, researchers looked at Earth 13 to 17 million years ago when carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and global temperatures reached levels similar to those experienced by the end of this century, and said when ice sheets melt, the exposed land beneath is less reflective, so local temperatures become warmer. This can drastically alter weather patterns because Antarctic winds usually blow from the continent out to the sea, but if the continent warms up that could be reversed, with winds blowing from the cooler sea to the warmer land. That would bring additional rainfall to the Antarctic, which in turn would cause more fresh water to run into the sea, according to a University of Exeter news release on Eureka Alert. Finally, because fresh water is less dense than salt water, it is less likely to sink and circulate, which means warmer water simply sits on top of the ocean, causing more warming. In line with that explanation, the study found that reductions in the area covered by ice sheets was far more important in creating further ice loss than reductions in ice volume, because the more land is exposed, the more warming processes are encouraged. The study's lead author explained that, essentially, if more land is exposed in Antarctica, it becomes harder for a large ice sheet to reform. However, when this happened previously, it's possible that favorable orbital positions prevented a collapse. Earth's positioning relative to the Sun caused the ice sheet to advance and retreat, and this altered weather patterns, and helped preserve, rather than melt, the ice in that instance. There is, of course, widespread acceptance that man-made climate change is driving the initial warming in Antarctica, with the National Snow and Ice Data Center in the U.S. noting that the Antarctic Peninsula, which juts out into warmer waters north of Antarctica, has warmed 2.5 degrees Celsius or 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit since 1950, and National Geographic adding that since the early 1990s, Antarctica has lost roughly 3 trillion tons of ice. Earlier this year, though, the University of Reading released the most detailed ever study forecasting the vulnerability of ice shelves surrounding Antarctica to climate change, and it found that a shocking 34% of the area of all Antarctic ice shelves would be at risk of destabilization under 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit of global warming. These concerns are mirrored in the Arctic, where last summer the National Snow and Ice Data Center found sea ice shrank to its second lowest ever extent in the 42-year satellite record. As mentioned earlier, that's bad news for the climate, as sea ice helps cool the planet, but the NCIDC added the detail that 80% of the sunlight that strikes sea ice is reflected back into space. At the time, the NSIDC's director, Mark Serez, explained melting ice was caused in part by 100-degree Fahrenheit heat waves in Siberia that occurred in June and massive wildfires in the western United States. Either way, though, the diminishing sea ice is driving polar bears, which depend on it as a platform for hunting seals, to extinction. It also threatens animals like walruses and seals, which use it as a platform for resting and giving birth. NSIDC director Serez told CNN that if the current trajectory continues, there will eventually be no Arctic sea ice in the later summer. Increasingly, studies are demonstrating that these warming and melting processes can have counterintuitive effects too, with NASA saying last year that not only is human-caused climate change rapidly melting Arctic ice and disrupting ocean currents, it could make Western Europe significantly cooler. The study outlined that the Beaufort Gyre is a current that previously kept the Arctic waters cold and protected sea ice. 
However, the glut of cold fresh water is making the gyre spin stronger and faster, and the natural reversal of the spin's direction has not happened for over 10 years. Researchers say that if the westerly wind guiding the current should reverse its direction, the cold water buildup could be unleashed all at once. The cold tide may well slow down the Atlantic currents that bring warmth to Western Europe. NASA said in its news release that disruptions to the Gulf Stream would have a negative impact on ocean life and the communities that depend on them. Of course, not all of this is our fault, just most of it. An underwater heat blob from the Atlantic, for instance, has been found to be exacerbating the warming of the Arctic Ocean and contributing to the rapid disappearance of Arctic sea ice, according to a study published in the journal Nature Climate Change last year. The study showed that the amount of heat transported to the Nordic seas and Arctic Ocean by ocean currents has increased dramatically since 2001. The poleward heat transport has been implicated as one possible cause of the warming of the Arctic Ocean and the rapid disappearance of Arctic sea ice. As warm surface waters travel to regions further north, they lose heat and gain in salinity as fresh water evaporates. When warm Atlantic water reaches the Arctic, it sinks to form a heat blob because the cool fresh water from the Arctic is less salty and thus more buoyant. This facilitates the formation of sea ice over the ocean. However, the increased transmission of heat to northern latitudes could hinder sea ice formation. On a similar note, a more recent study in August found that climate change isn't the only factor melting the giant Thwaites Glacier. Rather, the Earth itself may also be warming the massive block of Antarctic ice, which is colloquially known as the Doomsday Glacier. According to the study, the crust beneath West Antarctica is between 10 to 15 miles, or 17 to 25 kilometers thick, compared with around 25 miles, or 40 kilometers in the east, and this means that substantially more heat from below can access the west than can access the east. The researchers found that a geothermal heat flow of up to 150 milliwatts per square meter can occur beneath Thwaites Glacier, according to the study's lead author. Ultimately, the temperature on the underside of the glacier is dependent on a number of factors, including whether the ground consists of compact, solid rock, or of meters of water-saturated sediment, according to one of the study's co-authors, Karsten Gohl. It was already known that hidden rivers of relatively warm seawater cutting across the glacier's underbelly, plus the effects of unmitigated climate change, which warms both the air and the ocean, had caused massive melting. However, Gohl, a geophysicist, says that in addition to these factors, large amounts of geothermal heat can lead, among other things, to the bottom of the glacier bed no longer freezing completely or to a constant film of water forming on its surface. Both of these effects can ultimately result in the ice masses sliding more easily over the ground and into the ocean, causing rises in water levels. Of course, this does nothing to absolve us of blame or responsibility and still leaves us with a problem to solve. Alongside the UN's net carbon reduction targets, some people think at this point the situation is so dire that it might require attempts to geoengineer the climate back to a less dangerous state. For instance, scientists in 2019 suggested plans to save Antarctic glaciers and Arctic sea ice by refreezing them. In order to prevent sea level rises that would leave many coastal cities, such as New York, underwater, a study published in Science Advances proposed using 12,000 wind turbines to pump seawater to the surface, turn it into artificial snow, and then pump it onto two glaciers on the west Antarctic coast. According to study co-author Anders Leverman, it would take 7.4 trillion tons of snow over a 10-year period to result in a 2-centimeter drop in sea level, though the artificial snow would weigh the glaciers down and improve stability. As other research suggests, warm water currents may be melting the glaciers from the bottom up. There was also an idea to construct giant sills or underwater mounds to prevent the water from seeping under the ice shelves. While a separate Arctic ice management strategy called for the use of wind-powered pumps to spray water to the surface of sea ice, where it would freeze and thicken the ice cap. For the moment, of course, as these and a number of other geoengineering efforts attempt to get off the ground, it's likely that carbon reduction efforts are our best bet, as the UN's latest climate report focused on. The unsticking of glue that holds Antarctica together has emerged as a major threat to Antarctica's ice shelves. Here's what you need to know. The 2017 calving of the A68 iceberg from Antarctica's Larsen Sea ice shelf was likely caused by thinning ice melange, the mix of wind-blown snow, iceberg debris, and frozen seawater that normally acts to glue rifts together with larger blocks. That's according to a new study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which found the circulation of ocean water beneath ice shelves and radiative warming from above gradually deteriorates the ice melange. 
Counterintuitively, if the ice shelves themselves thin, rifts tend to heal, with average annual widening rates dropping from 79 to 22 meters, or 259 to 72 feet. Additionally, if both the shelves and the melange thinned, this also slowed rift widening. Only when the melange thinned separately to the ice shelf was rift widening found to increase from an average annual rate of 76 to 112 meters, or 249 to 367 feet. The reason for that is the ice melange starts out much thinner than the ice shelf itself, so when it thins down to 10 or 15 meters thick, it becomes akin to water, allowing the ice shelf rifts to be released and start to crack. The study's lead author, Eric Larauer, cited by SciTech Daily, says this idea explains why the A68 iceberg was able to break from the Larsen Sea ice shelf in the dead of the Antarctic winter, because even in winter, warmer ocean water can reach the melange from below. Previously, scientists had thought such large iceberg calving events in the Antarctic Peninsula were caused by hydrofracturing, according to Larauer, whereby melt pools on the surface allow water to seep down through the cracks in the ice shelf, which expand when the water freezes again. But this would not be possible in the dead of winter, with no melt pools present. The study then partially explains how ice shelves can start retreating and becoming unstable decades before hydrofracturing could act on them, and this, according to one of the study's co-authors, means we may need to rethink our estimates about the timing and extent of sea level rise from polar ice loss, i.e., it could come sooner and with a bigger bang than expected. It may seem odd that we are still discovering such fundamental ideas about what is happening to our planet, but in fact, vast areas of Antarctic knowledge remain untapped. For instance, earlier this year, The Guardian reported that a study by the Chinese Academy of Sciences found that climate change's effect on both Earth's poles has shifted the Earth's axis by an unprecedented margin. The planet's geographic north and south poles are the points where its axis of rotation intersects the surface, but they are not fixed. Changes in how the Earth's mass is distributed around the planet cause the axis, and therefore the poles, to move. In the past, only natural factors, such as ocean currents and the convection of hot rock in the deep Earth, contributed to the drifting of the poles. But the new research shows that since the 1990s, the loss of hundreds of billions of tons of ice a year into the oceans, resulting from global warming, has caused the poles to move in new directions. The scientists found the average speed of drift from 1995 to 2020 was 17 times faster than from 1981 to 1995. Since 1980, the positions of the poles have moved about 4 meters. The study theorizes that the accelerated decline of water stored on land is the main driver of the rapid polar drift since the 1990s. We are also actually still finding new creatures below the ice, with scientists earlier this year rethinking the limits of life on Earth after stumbling on a group of strange organisms living deep under a 900-meter-thick ice shelf. The Guardian reported at the time that researchers accidentally found a life-bearing rock after sinking a borehole through the filchner ron ice shelf to obtain a sediment core from the seabed. While the rocks spoiled their chances of obtaining the core, footage from a video camera captured unexpected images of organisms living far beneath an ice shelf. Surveys of Antarctic marine life have never previously found such stationary filter feeders, which survive by ingesting food that falls down on them. It had previously been assumed that the total darkness, the lack of food, and the freezing water was too hostile for them. Footage of the boulder shows that it is home to at least two types of sponge, one of which has a long stem that opens into a head. Organisms that look like tube worms or stalked barnacles also appear to be growing on the rock. Scientists theorize the animals feed on dead plankton, which is carried more than 600 kilometers by currents before reaching them. We're also still working to understand exactly what kind of effects temperature increases caused by humans will have on animal life like that. In 2017, scientists placed heated panels on the seabed near the UK's Rothera Research Station on the Antarctic Peninsula. The panels heated the water a few millimeters above them for a year, with researchers checking in and photographing the area periodically. Researchers found that the amount of sea life there had doubled after a rise of 1 degree Celsius. But after an increase of 2 degrees Celsius, only certain species continued to grow. With a view to facilitating these kinds of discoveries, a British architectural firm has designed the Discovery Building for the British Arctic Survey Research Team in Antarctica. Construction began on January 30, 2020. The building's exterior will be made with metal panels that are pale blue in color to prevent high ultraviolet rays from causing degradation to the structure, according to a press release from the architectural firm. The color is also a reference to the Antarctic sky. The Discovery Building will also have a wind deflector along its roofline that will be used to deflect cold air in the Antarctic so that the wind will travel down the structure's facade. This will help to minimize snow accumulation around the building. The structure also consists of a control tower from its roof. 
The tower will provide a 360-degree view of the area. The structure is expected to be completed in 2023. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.